Funding for Bringing It Back Home, Paul Metta and Cats Under the Stars is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. We had a class together in high school. You know, we found some common ground. We, I think we wrote a couple of songs together. And Long story short, we started playing as Cats Under the Stars in 1975. You have billed Cats Under the Stars as America's best dressed fishing band. One gig would be, let's put on tuxedos and do old Mills Brothers tunes and three-part harmony, and then this under the same name, Cats Under the Stars, it'd be a five or seven piece rock band playing the caboose. The Twin Cities reader, I thought, put it very nicely in their blurb for this gig, and they said, Paul plays around town a lot, but when he plays with the cats, he's but a spoke in a very powerful wheel. They're all consummate players, and they're great guys. And they were as good as anybody down in Minneapolis at the time. We've always been really good friends, and we always have fun together. The last time we played uh, Alcott Park was 1975. Forty years later, we're still playing the same gig. <laughs> so now to be back with those you know, cats, literally 40 years later, Given what we all know now, 40 years later, it's a real, you know, it's just, it's just a joyous, joyous time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll let you get ready right now. Please give a warm welcome to Cats Under the Stars. Ladies and gentlemen, Cats Under the Stars. And now, 40 years later, I want to introduce to you Cats Under the Stars. Stars over the prairie, stars over the prairie tonight. My family, I was very musical. We always had music in the house, you know, everybody was, somebody was always practicing for their lessons. Uh, and when they weren't doing it, we always had the radio on, you know, tuned to WBC in Duluth because, uh, you know, when we were preteens, uh, you know, it was the golden age of AM radio. I started playing guitar when I was about in second grade. I spent the majority of my free time around music. I met a guy named Chuck Christensen when we were in third grade and then uh, realized he lived right up the alley from me. And now we both realized, hey, we both play guitars. So we started playing together, like, you know, maybe even that, that uh, evening. That's their house right there, the gray one. We did a lot of practicing in both the basement of that place and the upstairs. 510, yeah. Yeah, you saw that picture of Paul and Christian with the, his sister and the, and the Maurice the Poodle? That was right there. It was the height of a lot of great duos, Simon and Garfunkel, uh, Chad and Jeremy, um, uh, you know, the Righteous Brothers. So it was like, hey, wait, let's, do, let's, let's form a folk duo. We call ourselves Paul and Christian. And, uh, you know, we thought we were the Iron Ranges' answer to Simon and Garfunkel. I was playing guitar in grade school. In fact, Paul and I went to the same elementary school, and he had a little duo, so I noticed that he had his uh, guitar case with him. And then I had a little combo that played Rolling Stones tunes, and he had kind of a rival band a couple blocks farther towards downtown that played mostly Bird's tunes. So we put together a, a rock band, Chuck and I. And we each had, we started out with two electric 12-string guitars. and. Uh, found a drummer named Gary Pagel, said he was family friends of mine. His sister had a drum set, so he became the drummer. We started playing primarily birds music, and we called ourselves the Positive Reaction. And in those days, everybody was in a band. When we're in grade school, rock and roll's everywhere. Radio, it's teenage dances, it's crazy. It became a big part of my life fairly quickly. I mean, I enjoyed doing it a lot, and I always sought it out, I sought out to learn more and more all the time. Because the people that I, I hung around with in those days, everybody played music. In those days, everybody played something, you know. And you'd do it for fun, you'd get together and you'd play. They went down all the trees on Fifth Avenue. Shut up, Fat Lane. Nobody's on the beat going to bed too. Access the road, but the train tracks taste too good on town. 
plug the accordion band Kissing boys, kissing girls Went down on the hood of road Jack Pavic kid the can Jack Pavic kid the can Virginia, Virginia I had a grandfather named Emil, who was my dad's dad, who owned a bar on the main street of Virginia called the Roosevelt Bar. Ran it for about 25 years. And my grandpa was an accordion player and also had an amazing collection of 78 records. And so I spent a lot of my childhood years with grandpa listening to these beautiful old Finnish 78s, waltzes and polkas. and. Uh, a lot of kind of really dark melodies, and uh, I tell people, I said, that's where my love of minor keys came from. I got to help him clean the bar on the weekends on Sunday, and Grandpa would play the jukebox, and it was, uh, you know, late 50s, early 60s, so it was classic country, you know, Patti Page doing the Tennessee Waltz, and uh, Johnny Cash, and and just all of that great old country music, which has instilled in me a love for that style of music and that type of songwriting, those story songs. But anyway, the song wrote for my grandpa called Black Cadillac. Like. Roosevelt pulling sevens on a roll. Hercules handshake, Chester feels a little good. You could bet on the love, like rings round his finger. Copacabana, we danced in the street. We played Woody Guthrie to the chief of police. All strippers, street cry, drowns out the singer. You could bet on the love of like rings round his fingers. And you go where the angels go. I dream black 
Cadillac will tab out on Sunday. Old hymns for the astronauts last right down on the runway. Old strip of street cried, red and dark for you. But I closed my eyes tonight, she rose in the blue. I train on the tone on the radio. Well, the cowboys can't find you, tumbleweeds right down on your tail. Sweetheart's gonna mess you, had you longer than most. You can bet on love, give up the ghost. You gotta give up the ghost, give up the ghost. Cadillac, Paul Metzler. Thank you. There was some real mojo in, the, in my hometown, Virginia, Minnesota, in the rock and roll scene that I was really tuned into. It was a band called the Tomorrow's Children, and they were a band from the south side of Virginia that had a record out, also won a WEBC battle of the bands in like 66 or 67. These guys had like long hair. When I was in grade school, I thought these guys were super cool. They'd be hanging out at the music store, you know, when I'd be in there looking at these guys. And they were good. And then in 10th grade, I had a, a guy named Tommy Moeller, who was a, a, he was a English and philosophy teacher, very well read, and uh, was also a musician. He was playing with Tony Perpich and the Perpetones. And we'd go play all these um, dances mostly VFWs and American Legions, occasionally a private party. Driving around, I remember we went to the Hobnob Room in the Coates Hotel where my parents used to hang out. So we get to go play these little clubs, you know, these nightclubs and things, and I go, oh, this is where mom and dad go to on the weekend, dress up and go to. So it was kind of like my doorway into the adult world, and I just loved it. I met Tim O'Keefe first year of high school. We were seniors, 1973, we graduated in spring of 74. I'd seen him around town. I'd heard him play at a couple of keggers and I uh, knew he was just a phenomenal harmonica player. We sat on the steps uh, after school and played for about two or three hours and really hit it up. So we just started hanging out. Like he was, we were like new best friends. And that's really, that's where the cat started, was, those, was us. And I knew Pastor Naki. I knew him more as an athlete, because he was a star athlete all through high school. But we weren't like buddies or anything. Um, but anyway, so Timmy hooked us up, and uh, it was just a delight to know, oh, Pastor Naki plays guitar, and he's a great fingerstyle guitar player. And we were all kind of listening to the same stuff. When I started playing with these guys, kind of, for real, Tim and Paul had already started playing. Paul had a, had a rock band called Damn Everything But The Circus, named after an E.E. E. Cummings poem. When these guys, I know this is hard to believe, they both had day jobs working construction. Mm -hmm. Both of us. And so anyway, Pat, uh, Timmy brought Jack Pasternak into the fold and we started playing together 
as Hot Walleye because we thought that was such a clever take on the band Hot Tuna. And we were Northern Minnesota cats and damn proud of it, I might add. I had cut this name out of a Crawdaddy magazine called Cats Under the Stars. So what a beautiful name for a band. It was an article by Robert Hunter, who was the lyricist for The Grateful Dead, but it had nothing to do with The Grateful Dead. It was really a stoner comedy article. But I thought it just sounded so poetic and what an image, Cats Under the Stars. August 17, 1975, Cats Under the Stars uh, appeared on the scene in Alcott Park in Virginia, Minnesota. And uh, we were, back then, it, it was a you know, banjo, two guitars, and harmonica. And as I recall, you know, I was up there this afternoon, the bandstand used to face the other way, it faced north. Right. And when we played, it was our first gig, and as I recall, the hospital complained, it was too loud. We play in the park, we become Cats Under the Stars, and then you get, now, it's, now we have to find a place to play if we want to play. So we were, we were the kings of, say, a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday night gig in a town that has less than 1,500 right. people. I mean, if we were the kings of the obscure gigs. We played in Biwabic right. at the Tumbleweed Bar on Tuesday. Yeah. We played the End Zone north of Virginia on Wednesday. And our business model was to call up unsuspecting bar owners and say, hey, we got a band and we will play for $100 and free beer. It was the, during the boom, so there was lots of activity, and, you know. I mean, Virginia was as alive as you can imagine. The main street of the Queen City, which is Virginia, was off the charts for, you know, 18-year-old children to be playing on because any place you went, there was a bar that was open. 22 bars on the main street of Virginia, on a five block area, and six of them had music every weekend. It was a nice confluence of uh, events and timing uh, where our crowd really started to coalesce around us. The Cats Good and stuff. the Stars started for me in 1975 after I left the University of Minnesota and uh, played the next several years. Well, we started off as an acoustic. I was playing uh, uh, banjo and guitar and then I took over on bass guitar. So we get together about every six weeks at Norman's Bar. Norman's Bar. Jam-packed. Yeah, yeah, it was jam-packed. Jam uh, we would uh, do like a weeks at a time. Monday through Saturday, and we'd all make enough money to pay our rent for a while, and uh, had a ball. We had to tape the shows. We wanted to have the shows, and that's what the dead did, so that's what we did. We got a little more serious when we started to play in Normans because we played six nights in a row. Yeah, we did. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're Cats Under the Stars here, concluding another temptuous week in beautiful downtown Virginia. When we started playing, we did a handful of songs by this uh, guy from Hibbing. A guy named Bob Dylan, you heard of him? He's a hockey player from Hibbing. Kind of a wiry forward, as I recall. All right, here's a Bob Dylan song. Good time to you as we're saving. Oh, you better start swimming. Oh, you sink like a stove. For the times they are changing. Now, my Dylan moment was, you know, you'd hear him on the radio. Um, but 1967, I'm, I'm 12 or 13, and my sister brought home Bob Dylan's very first record, uh, which I hadn't heard. And, you know, he was 21, 22 years old when he did that. And he sounded like he was, you know, the sound of his voice and the way he sang, he thought he was, you know, really old, 60 years old, 70 years old. And uh, he sang it with a certain authority and gravitas that, you know, you listen to it now, and it blows your mind at how, uh, how much he assumed those characters in those songs. I grew up, I loved hockey, I, you know, grew up playing a lot of sports, but when I heard Dylan was from Hibbing, it was like, okay, there's something else up here that I don't know about, that I need to learn more about. 
So you still go hitchhike and, and sit in front of his house on I believe it's 7th Avenue. I envisioned a young Bob walking out of that door, that little stucco house on the corner, and going out and really changing the world, certainly changing uh, the American music scene. Not only me, but millions of other uh, human beings, are, you know, across America had never heard music like this, plus a six-minute song. It is his vocals that you've never really heard anybody sing like that on the radio. And then those lyrics, you know, what are those lyrics about? Well, the line it is strong, the curse it is cast. The slow and now will later be fast. And the present soon will later be paid. The order is a rapidly changing. This is what can be done. You can go from here to wherever you want to go. And that's what, you know, that's one of the lessons I learned from Bob Dylan. Thank you. There was a mutual friend of me and Paul Metz's that used to sneak me into the bars when I was not old enough to go and see Paul play because he was always touted as one of the best guitar players. Yeah, Paul and the Cats were, you know, that's, that's, that's royalty here. So those are guys that were showing the people my age or that were coming up through that period how it was done. I was playing in bands. I remember hearing the Cats Under the Stars and liking the sound and the guys in the band and things like that. Very influential. You know, it, uh, they inspire you and an album that inspires you makes an artist say, yeah, I can do that too. We started to become kind of a, a rock and roll band playing, you know, country rock and blues, classic country. And then it turned into kind of a really fun Iron Range dance band. The Cats were a cover band, but never, uh, never a radio cover band. We, we covered tunes we wanted to play. And that's one of the things I'm proudest of about the band was we always played the music we wanted to play. And that's just, that's what was so much fun about it. Really where the Cats started to create somewhat of a name for ourselves when we went electric. In 1980, the Cats reformed again as an acoustic trio. Right now I am standing with Paul Metza, who is one of the members of Cats Under the Stars. Paul, welcome to Nighttime's Variety. It's nice Thank to have you, you here. Nice you have billed Cats Under the Stars as America's best dressed fishing band. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, we just uh, feel that the music we'll do in the course of an evening, which will rain, uh, range in, uh, from anything from the Mills Brothers to Uncharted Space Tones, uh, we simply feel it's best to call it just fishing music because we feel it sounds best in about 68 feet of water. <laughs> so we bought a set of uh, three white tuxedos and three black tuxedos. We ended up on the Garrison Keillor show, uh, Nighttime's Variety, and we had a kind of a nice run at it. What's the first song that you're going to do for us tonight? We're going to do our theme song, an old swing number from a band called Cats and the Fiddle, entitled We the Cats Will Swing for You. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll let you get ready right now. Please give a warm welcome to Cats Under the Stars.
don't have to drive my train. Tell your switchblade monkey, you don't have to ride your bed. Tell your half a waitress it's a high wire show. You drop a lover just like Domino. Your barbed wire blanket isn't ready to go. Just like a robot on death row. Just like a robot on death row. You should not train a doctor to put the bell on you. And men in a helicopter, you said they fell on you. Whistle blow. Ain't no difference, mama plugged in Romeo. You sit in the corner, dark as a wild in Mexico. Just like a robot on death row. Just like a robot on death row. Play that hard play. We had our own niche that was, we were different than everybody else. We had uh, the, small, <laughs> the smaller group, which was sometimes just the three of us. And that group, you know, we, like I said, we wore tuxedos. And boy, once you put on a tuxedo, people give you respect and they give you a fair amount of money. In those days, they did. Yeah, we were schizophrenic for a while. We had one gig would be, let's put on tuxedos and do old Mills Brothers tunes in three-part harmony, kind of a jazz thing. Three guys, and then this, under the same name, Cats of the Stars, it'd be a five or seven piece rock band playing the caboose. So the question would be for your average music consumer, which band are we talking about? Right. It was a little confusing, but you could make a living because you had dual identities. Yeah. And there was a lot of places to play in the Twin Cities. A lot of bars had music, that was awesome. So we went into the studio in 1983, <clears throat> and I had had some original tunes, and uh, we went into the studio for the first time, 
and we recorded a, a, almost several tunes, uh, three or four of mine, and Pastor Naki had a song. Paul's songwriting was getting to a point where, just like all of us, he was starting to go in a little bit different right. direction. He could see that singer-songwriter thing right. around the corner, and then the question for him would be, do I do it with this band, or right. do I do it Uh, I was playing, you know, I had a new band, a bunch of young cats, um, great musicians. We were playing all the joints around town. I ended up playing Farm Aid through my friend, comedian Tom Arnold, who had married Roseanne Barr, and they were hosting the event. Not all poor men are honest, not all rich men are thieves. But the rich man owns the orchard, you know, the poor man rakes the leaves. And as the world goes around, said, all I want to ask is, if the rich man owns the land, why must the poor man pay the taxes? Why does justice go so slow? Slow justice slowly goes. Politics was a big part of the Aaron Rand CD. You know, 12, 13 years old, man, you started to see the bumper stickers on the car, you started to see the lawn signs. I was raised in a very progressive, union-oriented, DFL-controlled area, the Iron Range. I'm probably known most for little pockets around the country for Jack Ruby. You know, that song has really resonated with a lot of people. Jack Ruby, Jack Ruby in a cab in our head. Whoever taught you to shoot a pistol like that? Oh, you snuck in the basement and you stood in the back. Jack Ruby, Jack Ruby in a cab in our head. 1992, I did a record down in Nashville. Bucky Baxter was playing with Bob Dylan. Gary Talent was uh, played bass, who still plays with Bruce Springsteen. They owned a studio together. And then uh, when I put out Whistling Past the Graveyard, the record I recorded in Nashville. And it got airplay all over the country. But we were never able to parlay that into the next thing, the tour, the opening acts. I think he's reached some great heights. So, you know, I mean, whether you go further, there's choices you make as to, are you, are you comfortable now? You know, I mean, some people just come off the road because they're, they, that's, that's enough. It's a tough business, you know? You know how tough it is out there. It could have been, you know, it's all timing, I think. Right place, right time. He was so close, he was scratching every edge. Hit a couple of walls in the late 80s. Cocaine, cocaine, everybody had it. I mean, club owners, musicians, off-duty cops, fallen priests, sorority gals. I mean, you know, everywhere you look. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Spent a weekend uh, downtown in Hennepin County Jail. Long story short, bounced back. You know, it took a while. I mean, I had to rebuild everything. You know, by then I had, you know, I'd lost my band, I'd lost my gigs, and uh, you know, I was living in my girlfriend's parents' basement. The first, or was that the second comeback? I'm on my fourth now. It's hard to keep track of them. Virginia, Virginia. We opened up for Ry Cooter, who was a huge inspiration to us. I mean, we'd, we'd been big Ry Cooter fans for many, many years. That kind of got us on the map a little bit of a legitimacy by playing the Guthrie. Yeah. In those days, playing the Guthrie was a big thing. Yeah, I played there seven times. I played with uh, the Neville Brothers, Leon Russell with Edgar Winter, Roseanne Cash. 
Lyle Lovett, um, J.J. Kale. And then I uh, sold it out January 31st, 1994. I was gonna move to Nashville. We're taping tonight on 24 tracks. We don't know what's gonna happen with it, but if anybody here is interested, we're just gonna do a mail order just for the people that are here tonight. Spent all the money that I was gonna go to Nashville on, taping the show, which I'm glad I did. It was the last time my mother saw me play. She passed away four months later. It threw me into what now I know it was a clinical depression, but I had played my last big gig in Minneapolis, so I couldn't play anymore, you know, but I didn't have any money to go anywhere, and I, I could barely get out of bed. I was so depressed. Oh. Christmas Day, 1994, I got a letter from Nora Guthrie, Woody's uh, daughter, and it was like gonna be the first Christmas without mom, and I was, it was just like, Man, the skies parted, the sun came out, the ice melted, and I said, that's it. I'm going to New York City, and I'm gonna meet Nora Guthrie. Ended up playing the tribute to Woody Guthrie at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and uh, got to be very good friends, still good friends with Nora. That was the beginning of the third comeback. Meeting Pete Seeger was, of course, you know, that was the guy. That, that was probably, you know, that's like, man, he came down on the mount and now I'm speaking with him, you know. So when we played together, I told him, I said, Pete, I said, the very first folk song I ever learned was Where Have All the Flowers Gone? Out of a Pete Seeger songbook for young folk singers. And then so many years later, to be sitting there talking to the man himself, he has his banjo on my guitar. I could just die now before I have it. You know, it's, it's like, for me, it's the, those moments, that's what sustains you. Buddies, it's been 15 years. Maybe they can cheer me up again. They play a little music on the drums and the bass, and they get down the harmonica. We will all go and sing. Go and sing. Go and sing. I think what happened at the time we kind of dissolved the band was that people were going in different directions. The two band concept got a little bit. We kind of had two identities. That was a little difficult. Then you had some guys in the band that didn't play on some gigs. That can be a little difficult to to manage. And we had uh, hooked up with a guitar player named Jeff Cerniak. Jeff uh, started to drive a bit of a, a wedge between the band. Of course, personality conflicts are gonna happen, especially when you're in business with your friends. I wanted to do something different with my life and I moved down to Arizona for a little while. I was a little bit like Tim, I was getting tired. I remember once Paul and I calculated how many gigs we had played over the series of three or four years, and it would be the equivalent of being in a bar every night for a year and a half, if you lined oh, all yeah. those nights up. And you just had to get out of it. We were really good musicians, at times great musicians, but on a good night, we were a really great damn band. And, uh, and the reason why is because we really enjoyed it. And when it started to become personal and political and in a downer, it was really like our reason to exist disappeared. Do not play matches, baby. Matches will start fires. Keep your feet above the flames when you are walking on the wire. Life is short, but time is sweet. Keep your train on the train. When you're whistling past the graveyard, and the graveyard whistles back. Don't forget your mother. She brought you in this world. You are the Dream that she once had since mama was just a little girl. Send her cards and flowers and 
don't step on the cracks when you whistle past the graveyard and the graveyard whistles back. This world don't owe you nothing. You don't even know your name. You might be a king or queen, but the end's gonna treat you the same. Drop your crunk before you leave. I don't cover up your tracks. When you whistle past the graveyard, graveyard whistle back. Read your horoscope. Tell a white lie to a rabbi. Make a collect call to the Pope. Because the same faith that will save you may also break your back. Past the graveyard, the graveyard whistles back.
With the cats, you get the highs and the lows. A yeah, yeah. little bit of the in-betweens. We can take you up, we can take you down. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? What's your best memory of the cats? Right. Go way back. What... It's not the kind of stuff you want to have the on film because dinner. it's all against the law. <laughs> One question, any chance the gig is going to get together for good? Uh, no comment. Okay, once a year is kind of fun. I moved out to California. I can remember coming back for visits where we'd actually we yeah, we'd oh, throw, yeah. threw a gig together. So it started it started to flow back, you know. We've always been really good friends, and we always have fun together. I think that's the main thing, you know. And we have we have a musical communication that happens. We love music. We love to play. We love to perform, and we love to hang out, and we love to drink a little bit, and we love to see people dance and people have fun. And so we just always went for it. We took it to places that I don't think a lot of other bands were that were playing their, you know, maybe three to four minute tunes at the time. And we, we you know, we play six, seven, eight minute, ten minute tunes. Uh, and O'Keefe was a virtuoso on the harmonica. So we would just support him and he would go, you know, course after course would just be like a bird in flight. We just follow him into the great beyond, you know, and we'll, you know, we'll meet you at the end, you know. I work full time as a musician. Uh, I have, I've, you know, as forever, you know, ever since the days of the cats. I played many different groups. Um, I started playing world music and I play music from all over the world all the time. And I get to do some really great things. I get to play with some incredibly great top names and music from around the world. I work for a law firm in downtown Minneapolis. I'm a real estate guy is my background. I worked for government for about 20 years and um, play, most of my guitar gets played in my basement when my wife's at the grocery store and I can turn the amp up. But uh, yeah, so I got a day job. I've been really honored and blessed to play with a lot of great musicians like Sonny Earl, wonderful harmonica player. I've been playing with him for 20 years. Willie Walker, Big J McNeely, who's 89 years old, kind of the king of the tenor sax honkers. You know, for me at this point in my life, it's like, I just feel like I, I'm, you know, I'm playing with the, some of the best musicians in the world who just happen to be really good friends of mine. We are kings of the mild frontier. That's right. 40 years later, we're happy to be back together. We're doing this tour to kick off our you know, 40th year, just to remember it. And God knows where it's gonna go from here, but I wanna say it's such an honor and a pleasure not only playing with these guys, uh, but we've, uh, we've developed a friendship. There's very little else any of us have done in our lives that's been longer than the 40 years the band's been together. Haven't had a job that long, haven't been married that long. I mean, that's a long time for anything. So, a lot of history, a lot of laughs. It's kind of the beauty of playing with Cats and the Stars now 40 years later. You know, number one, there's very few bands that still have the original members after 40 years. Uh, secondly, there's very few bands that if they do, still play well. I hope we get to, we get to do this 40 years from now. <laughs> okay, I hope you pass the audition. <laughs> we'll see. We'll probably keep doing this now until what they call the final curtain. Buck shot so pants Spin a bottle with Tiger Jig I remember Grandpa's European prayers in the bunkhouse Two these days his prayer try to bring him back Hand in hand with my brother and my sister Chinese jump from high to high They're not hiding but they're just out of your shot 
Hope to the heavens the words don't fall apart I wish you could see Stars over the prairie Stars over the prairie tonight I wish you could see Stars over the prairie Stars over the prairie Under the gazebo, where I stole my first kisses. In the fall, I used a Cadillac with crow. For me and my buddies, like a good gypsy army. Finding each other's cars is like that where I want. In the great scramble alley, where I duck suck a punch in. In the shadow, my old man. Before I blacked out, wonder how Duke might have done it. Before I found out, I took up with the band. I never did go back. And I wish I could see stars over the prairie, stars over the prairie tonight. And I wish I could see stars over the prairie, stars over the prairie to be okay. To love on a flip flop. All I got is old love that is a magazine. So I sit in this city, I look out my window where the neon moon shines when day is done. And I see all the people let it slip through their fingers. They can be with them, but they cannot be with anyone. Everybody. And the ones that can see the stars over the prairie. Stars over the prairie, everybody sing along. And I wish I could see stars over the prairie, stars over the prairie tonight. And I wish I could see stars over the prairie, stars over the prairie tonight. And I wish I could see stars over the prairie. Stars over the prairie, and I wish I could see stars over the prairie, stars over the prairie tonight. And I wish I could see stars over the prairie, stars over the prairie tonight. Wanna see my mama and my papa? And I wish I could see stars over the prairie. Stars over the prairie tonight. Everybody come back from the heaven. And I wish you could see. Stars over the prairie. Stars over the prairie tonight. And I wish you could see. Stars over the prairie. Stars over the prairie tonight. And I wish you could see. Over the prairie, woe tonight, 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 woe tonight,
Whoa, tonight, tonight, tonight. What a lovely night. Thank you. Love everybody. Cats under the stars. Bless you all. Drive safely. So I grew up in uh, Virginia, which is the Queen City, the Iron Range. I said, 20 miles away, there was a town called Hibbing. And a young musician, 15 years older than me, by the, name, uh, by the name of Robert Zimmerman, changed his name to Bob Dylan and became a big star. I kept my name and didn't. Funding for Bringing It Back Home, Paul Metta and Cats Under the Stars is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.